All right, so for uh, today's project, uh, I'm going to be pulling this machine out here and um, adding in a, um, a cylinder head temperature gauge. I used to have it on my red FL350, um, but I upgraded that to water cooling and everything. So um, I actually have another video where uh, I'm going to be actually trying to add one to the red FL350 machine. Um, didn't quite go as planned. Uh, you'll see the details out in the next clip. But uh, for now, I'm going to get this machine uh, pulled out into my garage and get started uh, working on it. And hopefully you guys can enjoy watching that process as um, I put in the cylinder head temperature gauge uh, to keep some um, a check on the temps and everything while I'm riding. So the, uh, what I'm going to add here, it's called the Trail Tech Vapor. Now, uh, this is a whole, um, mostly for motorcycles and stuff like that. It's uh, pretty cool. It's got your speed, you got your um, your miles, um, and then of course at the very top, I'll pull this thing off here so you can see it better. Up the top here, depending on what mode you're on, let's see here, not sure which one it was, but oh, up here on the left, it'll show uh, temperature. So this is a cylinder head temperature. And the way that it, it does that, you have this, uh, this spark plug, this goes around, uh, this ring goes around your spark plug, and of course it plugs into the unit here and then just reads the spark plug temperature. Uh, I find this really, really uh, handy. I'm gonna actually even add it on to my red FL350, uh, even though it's water cooled. Um, I think it's really good to keep an eye on what that uh, temperature is right at the spark plug. So I'm gonna get the camera set up and just wire it up. It's not gonna be a complicated process, um, just a little bit of wiring and uh, it'll be good to go. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take the spark plug off. So. Uh, using my 13th, 16th socket. It's probably some millimeter socket in reality, but that's all right. So we're just gonna take this off. Of course, make sure that the top of your engine is cleaning and everything, that there's not a lot of gunk or anything that could fall into the uh, spark plug hole. So just gonna loosen that up. And then here's my wire. Make sure it's good. Take this off. All right, looks nice and nice and dark there, so we're running nice and rich, which is good. That's what we want to see. Pull that out. All right, we're just going to gently. See this. I think I'm going to set this wire this way because I'm going to attach the wire there. Okay, so we're just going to thread this in gently. Just like that. Take a red. Tighten it down. Okay. So then we put our spark plug wire back on like that. Nice and tight. Okay, then we're gonna get some zip ties and stuff. I'll uh, grab those in a second. <clears throat> we're just gonna zip tie up this wire so uh, it doesn't flop around or anything like that. All right, so we got our, our zip ties here and uh, I'm just gonna run my wire right along my spark plug wire, just like this. All right, so uh, I got this uh, mostly kind of figured out how I want. I'm using uh, white zip ties, this is what I have. Um, if I had thought ahead, I would have had black zip ties to go on this, but uh, for now, this will work. Um, just running the bar uh, through this tube. Um, 
this this wire is not real thick and um, you just I could have kind of run it through here and up and then kind of hang it out but I was afraid that if um, a foot or something caught in it, it would just rip the wires so I'm just going up along this bar um, not the best kind of routing and everything but I think I'm gonna live with it so at this point all I gotta do is just plug this in there's multiple sensor here this one just clips right in and then uh, run some wires up here and uh, we should be good to go actually I think I want to reverse this a little bit okay so that takes care of our zip ties now the next thing we got to do is uh, we got to run power to this so I think I can't remember if it actually run off of batteries or not. Um, there is a battery in it, but I think uh, I think it's only um, power. So I'm gonna get the, uh, the power for that and then I'll come back. All right, well, after zip tying everything, I just realized that I gotta run the power wire. So it's a little premature and zip tying everything. So I'm gonna cut everything back off that I need. It's a good thing zip ties are cheap. All right, so that runs the wire for the power. Now I also have in this pile of uh, goodies. Now I took this off my FL350. Um, I was running this initially on that. That's what I bought it for. So this is all set up with a, um, a speed sensor too. And uh, I'm gonna try and hook it up. Might as well since I got it. I just don't remember exactly. Let's see here, I think. I think this is it. Yeah. Okay. So here's the uh, the speed sensor. So I'm gonna have to figure out how to wire that up. I'm not gonna show that on video because it'll take me forever. Um, but I'm gonna uh, zip tie this thing in anyways because it doesn't need to get hooked up. So. All right. So in order to get the uh, speed sensor hooked up, I'm gonna have to take the wheels off. So let's go ahead and do that now. I think these are 12 millimeters. Let's see if I can get this off. All right, so the first thing I gotta do here is I gotta put on uh, the sensor bracket and um, I gotta readjust this a little bit because it was set up for my other machine. So what we're gonna have to do is back this off. 15 millimeter. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to loosen this nut here all the way so it's flush and then tighten this back nut up. Some dirty thread, so I'm gonna have to clean it. Okay, so I have uh, I have this loose now. I'm gonna put it back on my bracket. I just grabbed some random pieces of metal, or I think this is from an old door jam or something like that, but it seemed to work fine. So I'm just gonna use it again. Work fine on my 350, it should work fine here. So the sensor just kind of goes up there, and then we're gonna tighten this down like that. Okay, so now our, our sensor is nice and uh, kind of flush to that, or more flush. Okay, so the next thing is uh, this little bracket here needs to be attached somewhere along here. And uh, I think I'm actually, I'm just gonna cheat and probably zip tie it because I don't wanna drill through anything just for this. Um, so I think I'm just gonna zip tie this in. And then what, the important thing is to make sure that this rotates. So I may have to kind of bend this into an L shape and then place it kind of up here. 
out of the way and, and that should read just fine, I think like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and bend this bracket and uh, come back. Okay, so I bit my bracket into a little L shape here and then it's just gonna mount right on up here. And the important thing is that we need it to be in line with basically one of these wheel nuts. It's, it's slightly off, but I think it's gonna be okay. Could also maybe come up from underneath. I don't think I want it hanging down below. Um, yeah, I think we're gonna go right up top. All right, so I've had to kind of change plans a little bit here. Um, the sensor was not being picked up when it was on the top. And that's just because this, um, the way that this nut travels as it rotates, it's just not gonna be in line with where I need it to. So I'm gonna put this actually underneath. So I, I bit my bracket a little bit more and I'm gonna hang it right underneath here like that. Now, unfortunately, this makes things a little uh, more difficult because they don't really have an obvious spot to put my zip tie through. So I'm gonna have to figure that part out. I think I'm gonna have to drill some additional, a new hole in this thing. So I'm gonna get that taken care of real quick and come back. So I added a hole here. I think this will kind of give me where I need to go for the zip tie here. Just make sure it's nice and tight. Big old fat zip tie right on through. This is just gonna go right on up. That feels like it might do what I need it to do. Okay, I think that might do. So let's put the wheel back on. Hook up our sensor real quick. All right, so it took me a little bit of time here, but uh, I finally figured out a solution. So the problem is, is that uh, the way that I had this set up, the bolts were not long enough in order for uh, the magnetic piece on the inside of the tire here um, it was the magnet was sitting here, which was too far away from the sensing magnet here. So uh, what I needed to do is come up with a solution. So what I did is I found my own bolt here and I drilled out the top and I can place in another magnet that I happen to have that fits just right to make my own uh, sensor. Now I'm going to glue this. I don't have any glue yet. I'm going to do that off camera and everything to make sure that it stays in here, obviously. Um, <clears throat> but this is enough that I can go ahead and finish uh, putting this all together. So. This bolt, is, we're gonna need another nut because it's gonna be end up sitting about like that to make sure that it gets close enough to our, our sensor down here. So I'm gonna get all that set up and then uh, we'll uh, come back to it once I have everything ready. All right, so to get an idea where I'm actually gonna put this bolt, I'm just gonna line this up here because I know that this is the correct spacing for what I need to clear. And this uh, nut here is uh, gonna go right up to this flange here. And uh, then I'm going to stick that inside. So it's going to stick out like that. And then on the back side, over here, I'm going to stick my washer, my secondary nut. Now this looks pretty tight. I might have to cheat just a little bit. Yeah, that looks pretty good like that. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and tighten this. All right, so uh, I had to make a few adjustments. The, the bracket was just a little bit in the way, so it'd have been another way. But I think we're just about there now. So what we're gonna do is go ahead and put on these wheel nuts over here. Tighten things down. Now, if we turn this like this, looks good. Look up here. Oops. 
like we're getting a reading. That's exactly what I want to see. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, finish tightening a bunch of stuff up here and getting the wire cleaned up. May not film all that, but uh, we'll do uh, kind of get ready for an outro in a little bit. All right, folks, well, uh, there you got it. It uh, took a few, uh, few stops and starts here as I try to figure everything out. Um, thankfully, I think I got it all uh, buttoned up. So uh, just to kind of recap, we got our uh, vapor, uh, trail tech vapor sensor here. And uh, so I have a cylinder head temperature sensor over here and then uh, just uh, speed. And what took all the time was actually hooking up the speed. So if we turn the wheel here, you can see we're actually reading so that seems to be working well uh, the wiring and everything uh, it's not complicated or anything like that it's pretty easy to install it's more just kind of the riding the cables and then the speed sensor on the wheel uh, took me for a little bit of loop but uh, anyways we got to figure it out got it wrapped up so that finishes the work on the FL 250 uh, next I'm gonna get started on the FL uh, 350 and let's see here putting in a cylinder head temperature uh, gauge on that so I'm going to get the FL250 pushed back into its right spot so I can get the 350 out and get started working on that. So with that, uh, thanks for watching and we'll catch you guys in the next clip. Take care.